Have a nice day. Good afternoon, ma'am. Hi. How are you doing? Good. How Can I see you? your passport? I'm fine, thank you. Okay, ma'am, do you have anything to declare today? Um, yes, officer. I have $1,000 in cash in my purse here. I guess I'm supposed to tell you that. Yes, ma'am. Let me take a look. Uh, okay, anything else to declare today? How about in your backpack? No, um, it's just clothes and stuff. I don't have anything else. Well, ma'am, you've, you've got more than $1,000 here. Quite a bit more than $1,000. Are you sure? I could have sworn there was only $1,000 there. No, ma'am, you've got, uh, more than $2,000 in cash here, and I, I'm really going to need to take a look in your backpack. Well, I think you must be mistaken, officer. I mean, I see only 1000 there. And I can assure you that there's nothing in my backpack that would be of interest to you, if you know what I mean. Well, ma'am, if you don't have anything more to declare, then you won't mind me looking in your backpack. I think you might want to count that cash again, officer. There's only $1,000 there, OK? It is likely that as U.S. Customs employees, you will be subjected to offers of bribery or illegal gratuity sometime during your career. It is therefore important for you to understand exactly what bribery is and what to do about it. Section 201, Title 18 of the U.S. Code states that it is unlawful to directly or indirectly corruptly give, offer, or promise anything of value to any public official to influence any official act performed or to be performed by that official. Now, put simply, bribery is a felony, and anyone who makes or accepts an offer of a bribe is breaking the law. Now, bribe offers come from many different sources, from informants, prisoners, friends, family members, and unfortunately, even from fellow customs workers. They come at any time, on duty, off duty, even on holidays or leave time. They can be spontaneous or they can be methodically planned and presented to you by someone you trust. In short, there is no pattern to the offer of a bribe, so you must be prepared at all times to react responsibly and sensibly to protect yourself and the interests of the Customs Service. In this program, you will be presented with a number of different situations in which a bribe offer is presented to a Customs official. You will see the offer and the response. Then you will be given an opportunity to discuss what you have just seen. In this way, you can better learn how to deal with a similar but real situation when you are confronted with it. Let's move on then to our first scenario. Better not be work. Malone's got you covering everybody's shift out there. Hello? Hey, Brian. It's Lester Stiles. Uh, yeah, Lester. <laughs> Buddy, uh, how's it going? Oh, uh, okay. As well as to be expected, I guess. Oh, yeah, look, uh, I'm sorry about the suspension. Uh, it must be tough, huh? Yeah, it is. So, um... Uh... Look, uh, the investigation ought to be over in uh, another week or so, and you'll be right back at work, right? Yeah, I know. That's what I keep telling myself. <laughs> You're a good friend, Brian. I appreciate the support. Listen, you think you can meet me down at Murphy's for a drink? I got something I really, really want to talk to you about. Uh, I don't know about that, Lester. Look, uh, this is my first night off in a week, and uh, Jess and I just kind of settled in. Uh, how about lunch tomorrow? Oh, oh no can do, Brian. Um, I really need to talk to you tonight, man. C come on. <laughs> Jess will understand. Uh, come on. Don't do this to me, man. I, I'm not so sure about that. Look, uh, the work schedule's really been a nightmare since you've been gone. and uh, I'm kind of a stranger in my own home. Listen, Brian, I wouldn't ask you if it wasn't important. Uh, can't, you, can't you spare an hour for an old friend? Hey, don't do this to me, man. What's so important that it can't wait till tomorrow? It's about, it's about money, Brian. Lots of it. But I just don't want to do it by myself. I can't do it by myself. Not without your help. I really need your help on this one, buddy. We can both make a bundle. Lester, 
Does this have anything to do with the job? Tell me that you're not about to ask me what I think you're about to ask. Listen, Brian, if I was on the line, I'd do it myself. I really need you, man. Hey, look, don't pull this shit on me. Who in the hell do you think you are calling me at home? In front of my wife, asking me to do some low-life stunt like this. Look, we get paid to bust people for doing what you're about to ask me to do. What in the hell do you think you're doing, Lester? Okay, Brian, forget it, man. I, I just thought... You didn't, you didn't think, Lester. Look, you're already on suspension, so maybe your job doesn't mean anything to you, man. But I'm lucky to have the job I've got, and I'm proud of what I do. So listen, Brian, I, I'm sorry I even brought it up. This is, listen, Brian, man, this is just between you and me, right? I mean, you're not going to do anything about this, are you? I mean, I mean you don't have to tell anybody, do you? I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to do anything. I promise. All right, Lester, this conversation never happened. Don't ever ask me to do anything like this again. We clear on that? We're clear. All right, well, look, um, I want to get back to Jess, okay? So, um... Okay, uh, I'll see you around. Yeah, buddy. Uh, I'll see you. An old friend in trouble calls you up and asks for a favor. Problem is, doing the favor means breaking the law. Another problem is, just by asking for this kind of favor, your friend has already broken the law. That's about where our friend Brian found himself in the last scenario. So what does he do? Just about what any friend would do, I expect. But as customs officials, that's not good enough for us. So let's turn back the hands of time and see if Brian has another solution to his problem. Man, don't do this to me, Lester. Look, what's so damned important this can't wait till tomorrow? It's about, it's about money, Brian. Lots of it. But I just don't want to do it by myself. I can't do it by myself. Not without your help. I really need your help on this one, buddy. We can both make a bundle. A lot of money? Huh? It doesn't cost me anything? Hell yeah, I'm interested, man. But look, uh, I can't leave Jess tonight. So, so what have you got, man? Work. What do you mean it's about work? Listen, Brian, I am innocent of those charges everybody's been talking about, man. I mean it, man. But they're going to nail me for it just the same. Now, now I've got a family to take care of. And, and Sarah... David and little Becky don't deserve the screw job they've been handing me. So I figured out a way to make enough money to make it right for me and them. And you. I was wondering how you felt about looking the other way one day out there on the line. I don't know, Lester. I guess it has a lot to do with uh, how I feel about how right you're going to make it for me. I don't know, Brian. But I do know these guys. And they'll be fair, more than fair. Yeah. Well, what do you mean, more than fair, Lester? It's me risking my ass out there. So I need to know up front, okay? Well, I can probably find that out. I'm going to see them see you tomorrow, but that's why we have to meet tonight, Brian. It's the deals go down in two days, and we need to set this up. Look, I'm not leaving here tonight, Lester. <sighs> it's going to make Jess too suspicious. Hey. And she hears nothing about this. Right? Right, right. I'm not going to say nothing. So, um... Tomorrow, late lunch. Two o'clock, Stacy's Diner. All right? Okay, two o'clock at Stacy's, right. Thanks, Brian. Hey, don't thank me. You just know what the payoff is tomorrow. The deal's off. You got that? Y yeah, I got it. See you at Stacy's. Yeah. Hey, Brian, you about done in there? Yeah, I'll be there in a minute, honey. Yeah, Sector. Look, this is uh, Inspector Brian Ballard. Advise Internal Affairs Duty Agent to give me a call right away, okay? Yeah. 
Tonight will be fine. Our friend Brian really feels bad for what he's about to do. An old friend, a fellow customs official. What he needs to remember now is that old friend offered him a bribe, and by doing so, not only broke the law, but diminished the friendship. Inspector Ballard is duty bound to report this incident to Internal Affairs, but he can console himself with the knowledge that a true friend would never have placed him in the position to do so. He is therefore reporting the crime, and he is identifying the criminal, not a friend. Let's move now to our next situation, out to a customs entry point where there is always some excitement. Good evening. How you doing, sir? Nice car. Thanks. I like it. Wish I could afford one like it, but hey, I know what this thing set you back. You can't afford it, Inspector. You just have to want it bad enough. <laughs> yeah, we're like blowing off a house payment once a month. I wasn't talking about your budget, Inspector. I'm talking about opportunity. It's about playing your cards right. Here's your opportunity. If you play this card just right, it can open a lot of doors for you. No thanks, I don't play those kind of cards, sir. Okay. No harm done. Look, I think you better head on down the road and don't come back here through my lane anymore. You get my meaning? Loud and clear, Inspector. Good day. Good day. Bad move. Looks like our inspector is afraid to get himself involved in anything, including an investigation. When confronted with a situation like this, he should have played it smart, kept his foot in the door, and then contacted Internal Affairs. The fact is, this may not have been a bribe offer. It truly could have been a legitimate proposal. But our inspector failed to clarify if this was a bribe offer. The only way to find out is to carry it through. Let's go back again to see if he could have worked this any other way. Here's your opportunity. You play this card just right, and it can open a lot of doors for you. Yeah? Card just like this one, huh? Anything you want, boss. Uh, okay, Mr. Uh, Smith, what, what do you have in mind? You call me at that number. In a position like yours, you could make ten times your salary in just one day. Really? Well, I'll give it some thought. Uh, listen, in the meanwhile, you better head on down the road before they get suspicious. Okay. You call me now. Oh, I'll do it. Hello, Internal Affairs. This is Inspector Gallen. Um, listen, something happened out on the line today that I think you might want to know about. Much better. This time, our inspector kept the lines of communication open. He was able to obtain identifying data with the business card and the vehicle license. He established the groundwork for future contact, clarified the bribe, and according to policy, contacted Internal Affairs right away. If this is a legitimate offer from Mr. Smith, the investigation team will find out soon enough. And if it is not, then with a little quick thinking, our inspector has established the foundation for uncovering illegal activities. Now let's move on to our next scenario. Gotta get going or I'm gonna be late. Oh, come on, not so fast. Let's play a little hooky today. A little champagne, maybe go for a swim, get some sun. Mmm, sounds delicious, but I have appointments all afternoon, lover. I've gotta get to work. Besides, don't you have a three o'clock shift yourself? Yeah, but I got a lot of sick days coming in. <clears throat> I feel a little chest cold coming. <laughs> well, I don't. I'm not gonna let you bamboozle me into missing another day of work. Now, have you thought about my Uncle Roberto like you said you would? No, do we have to talk about him now? Come on, we can talk about him Come later. on, buddy, quit fooling around. I told you about this weeks ago, and you keep avoiding me. We gotta talk about it now. 
Uncle Roberto wants to make the trip next Thursday, and that's less than two weeks from now. Thursday? Damn! Look, I thought you were kidding. Don't pull that on me, buddy. You know I wasn't kidding. Leslie, don't you get it? This is my life we're talking about. This is my career. If I get caught, they won't stop there. You've got to be kidding me. A customs inspector helping somebody smuggle something across the border. They would nail me to the cross. Oh, buddy, you're not going to get caught. How many times did you let me across without paying duty? Did you get caught then? Look, that was totally different, and you know it. I know you. I don't know this guy. And you brought tequila and trinkets and... Look, this guy, I don't know what he's bringing. What is he bringing over the border? I don't know. He said it's better that way. Yeah, right. I don't know. Look, it just isn't right. You don't know what you're asking. Yes, I do, buddy. But I know you're smart, and you're not going to get caught. I also know it's worth a lot to my uncle. He'll pay, buddy. He'll pay big. This is for you, right now. It's only a down payment. There's a lot more once he gets here. Come on, buddy. You know what this money could mean for us. Times we could have, the places we could go. We could go anywhere we want. Why does this always have to be about money? I thought we had something between us. I should have known you were just making me for a payoff. I can't believe you would sell yourself this cheap. Look, I don't care what you're selling, I'm not buying. Get the hell out of here. Our inspector has missed a great opportunity here. Allowing friends to escape customs duty taxes is obviously against the law, so he definitely has some explaining to do. But he shouldn't compound his mistake by letting a bribery and smuggling attempt go unpunished. Let's go back then and see if by keeping a cool head, our inspector can find an appropriate way to enforce the law. I don't know, Leslie. Look, it just isn't right. You don't know what you're asking. Yes, I do, buddy. But I know you're smart. You're not going to get caught. I also know how much it's worth to my uncle. He'll pay, buddy. He'll pay big. This is for you, right now. It's just a down payment. There's a lot more once he gets here. Come on, buddy. You know what this money would mean for us? The times we could have, the places we could go. We could go anywhere we want. All right, now you're making some sense. Let me get this straight. Your uncle wants to sneak something across the border, and he's going to use that as a down payment. And he needs me to help him do it. Is that all there is? Well, I guess you could put it that way. And that's just a down payment. I mean, I'm not going to do this for chump change. Right. You get the rest as soon as he's safely here. How much? I got to know. 20000 As soon as he clears customs. OK. I need to know exactly what he's carrying. I told you, he didn't tell me. I don't know. Cut the crap, Leslie. I need to know exactly what it's carrying, or I, I'm not going to do it. You'll find yourself another sap. Cocaine. Okay, it's cocaine, but I don't know how much, I swear to you. All right. All right, I need time to think about this. I'll tell you what, you go home and I'll call you tomorrow. Buddy, I got to know now. Look, I can't tell you now. Just, just give me a little time to think about it. Just go on home. I could come over tonight and we could... No. Go home. I'll call you first thing in the morning. I promise. Okay. First thing tomorrow morning. First thing. Hello, Internal Affairs? Yes, this is Inspector Buddy Copeland. Yes, I have a bribe to report. Right. B before I do that, there's, uh, there's something else I need to report. Yeah, uh, about Inspector two years Buddy ago. Copeland has a couple of rough days in front of him. 
there are going to be some tough questions about his previous conduct out on the line regarding his lady friend. But in all likelihood, he has salvaged his career and his integrity. Now let's see if our next customs official is thinking as clearly. Yeah, that was some great work, Donnie. Thanks for the tip. Yeah, let me tell you, those guys are going down for a long time. We couldn't have done it without you. You know, agents like Mike and me, we'd be lost without sources like you. Hey, no problem. I enjoy doing business with you boys, you know? Yeah, me too. Larry was right. I know this is our first time together, but I hope it's not our last. Now, Mike, that's a nice thing to say. I appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. Hey, it's going to be a nice payday for you too, Donnie. Nice payday. Check that out. $100,000. You know, that's my favorite part. Whew. Mm. Can you feel it? Love and air, boys. <laughs> you mm. are a maniac, Donnie. Yeah, and a rich in it that. Yeah, well, don't spend it all in one place, okay? <laughs> Larry, we better get back to the office. We got a ton of paperwork to do oh, before the day's through. Yeah, I'll be down there in a hey, minute. Hey, thanks, Mike. So listen, uh, that really was, that really was a good one this time. Hey, you did good. Thanks, Larry. Listen, I gotta go, uh, but uh, let me know if anything happens with that business in Miami, all right? Hey, I will, but listen, Larry. Let me run something by you. Can I? You got a minute? Well, hey, listen, Mike can wait. It's gonna take a few seconds. All right, all right. What you got? Well, I tell you what, I got something to make this hundred thousand dollars look like pocket change. But first, let me just say this, Larry. I wouldn't be telling you this if I didn't know we could trust each other. I mean, you know, that we'd be all right with each other, and most of all, that you'd be okay with this. I know where you're coming from. I know where you're coming from, Donnie. I mean, you can trust me. What's up? Okay, listen, here's the deal. You know that shipyard, man? They got uh, a whole hell of a lot of Colombian uh, coffee coming in, like every day. Yeah, every day, so what? Uh, so, every couple of weeks or so, one of those shipments is gonna have something a little extra inside, if you know what I mean. Your job is to check, see if the company's on lookout, or if that particular shipment has been scheduled for examination, so to speak. Hey, if that's the case, you let me know. I let my people know. Everybody walks away. Nobody gets hurt. And what if the shipment's clear? Hey, merchandise gets picked up. I give you 10 grand. Simple, right? Hey, that's all you need to do, man. All we need is the intelligence. The only person you have to talk to is me. This is going to happen every couple of weeks? Well, give or take. I'm going to make 20 grand every couple of weeks? Is that <laughs> what you're saying? Hey, Larry, only if the shipment goes through. But you know, that's going to happen almost every time. Yeah, I know. Okay, so what do you think? Well, it sounds too simple. I mean, 20,000 bucks a month sounds too simple. I mean, what if something goes wrong? What if I don't get the intelligence straight? What if they change the schedule on me at the last minute? A lot could go wrong here, I'm telling you. Sounds too risky, Donnie. Hey. Listen, with anybody else, I'd say, yeah, a lot could go wrong. But not you, Larry. I know you, man. You're good. You're real good. You're not going to let anything go wrong. I know that. I told my people that. And anyway, your payday's going to be so high. I don't know what you're talking about. Look. It's five grand. Okay? Let's just call it a good faith offering. Go on, take it. I mean, Larry, you and me, man, we've been busting our humps for five years, chasing down a bunch of scumbags and making millions. And we nail maybe, what, one in every 10,000? And what the hell we get to show for it? I get a few measly bucks for risking my neck every day, and you, <laughs> you get that sorry-ass paycheck and a pat on the back. There's something wrong with this picture, Larry. Look at it. Wrong guys are getting rich. You know, you're right. Maybe it is time to balance this thing out for once. Hey, I tell you what, I'll set it up a couple of days. I'll be back in touch with you. Okay? <sighs> Listen, I gotta go. Guess what?
The son of a bitch just offered me a damn bribe. Are you kidding me? I thought he's going straight. So did I. Damn it. <sighs> well, there goes our backstage pass. No more bus for Donnie Stringer. Yeah, except for his own. What's the angle? Hey, let's head on over to IA. I'll tell you about it on the way. All right. We've got a couple of problems here. First, whenever a bribe offer is made, it should never be shared with anyone other than internal affairs. The reasons for this are obvious. Secondly, even though our investigator was well-intentioned, he should have never accepted that money from his informant. There is a much better way to handle the situation in which he has found himself, one that will not leave him vulnerable to his informant or place his integrity into question. Let's check it out. You're right about that, Donnie, and the money does sound good, but uh, I don't need to take your money just yet. Let me think it over, and uh, I'll call you tomorrow. Yeah, man. Take it anyway, even if you decide against it. But I know you won't. I mean, Larry, it's a hell of a deal. Plus, it's safe. No, man, you keep your money. Listen, this is a big step for me. Uh, <laughs> let me think it over, huh? Hey, and don't you go spending this money before I call you back, okay? Okay, man. You suit yourself. But, Larry, next time we meet on this thing, I'll be checking you for wires. It's just precaution. I mean, I know we've known each other a long time, but you are still carrying that badge, old buddy. Fair enough. Listen, uh, I gotta go. I'll, okay. I'll call you tomorrow. Sure thing. Out of here. Hey, let's get out of here, huh? Everything okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm just a little tired. Uh, hey, what do you say when we get back to the office, you uh, start that paperwork without me? I, uh, I gotta do something. Sure, Larry. Anything I can help you with? No, no, I, uh, I gotta do this alone. This time, Larry played it smart. By keeping his head when the bribe offer was presented, he was not only able to ensure that his integrity remained intact, but was also able to set the stage for uncovering an illegal smuggling operation. In addition, Larry demonstrated both self-restraint and a thorough knowledge of customs procedures by not telling his partner about the offer and immediately contacting Internal Affairs. Overall, Larry gets high marks on how he handled this situation. Now, let's move on to another scenario to see if our next customs official scores as well. Man, look at this neighborhood. Look at these houses. I guess we know how the other half lives. Never my best dream ever to live in digs like these. Yeah, they're nice, all right. Nice? I bet this guy's lawn boy makes more than me and you. Hey, I think this is him coming. Yeah. There's our man, all right. And right on time. <laughs> Thank goodness for small favors. Nice touch. Give me a break. I gotta tell you, partner. Just ain't right. Scumbag like Rigetti drives that car and lives in a place like this. All the time, me and you are bopping around in a soccer mom's dream van, watching him do it. Just ain't fair. Whoever said life is fair, Sam. Come on, we're doing all right. I like my job. I know you like it too. I got a wife who loves me. I got two great kids. And you got a dog and a partridge in a pear tree. Didn't you ever want to do more for them? I mean, I, I know I want to do more for mine. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. That's why we're here, Sam. We just got to plug away and do the best we can. Yeah, yeah. Chances are when we nail him, he'll be out on the street in 48 hours. I'm just sick of it, Paul. I'm sick to death of it. I'm going to do something about it, too. <laughs> what are you going to do about it? Well, I was thinking we might uh, get a little gravy while the train's still in. And I want us to do it together. What the hell are you talking about, Sam? Look, the only thing this war on drugs is doing is making the wrong people rich. I thought it was time to turn the tables a little. I found a way where we could make a fortune without any risk. Really? How are you going to do that? First, 
Let me know if you're interested. Yeah, I'd be interested. All right. You know that money laundering operation you got with that jerk Cisco? Yeah. What about it? Well, so our informant's supposed to tell us where the car is day after tomorrow, same as usual, right? Yeah, so? So in the beginning, it goes according to plan. Cisco calls to say where the car is parked so our guy can go pick it up. So, I know somebody who will pay us $100,000 to tell him where that car is before our informant gets there. Hmm. So what are you saying? We uh, give this new guy the information so he can steal the car and the money before our informant gets there. Exactly. In the meantime, no one can figure it out. The car and the money's just gone. And we both split $100,000. 50-50? You really think we'd get away with it? They'd never catch us in a million years. You know how the operation works. There's no risk. I don't know. This is heavy stuff, Sam. Let me think about it, okay? All right. All right. You go ahead and think about it. But I'll tell you what, I don't want to do it without you. So you go ahead and decide, and that's what we'll do. But I'm just asking you, partner, do this one for me. You're right. I'll, uh, let me just think about it overnight, okay? I'll let you know tomorrow. Good enough. So how long are we going to sit here and watch this scumbag? About an hour. Hey, I'm sorry, darling. I didn't mean to wake you up. No, I was waiting out for you anyway. How was work? Paul, Paul, is everything okay? Sam offered me a bribe tonight. What? Your partner, Sam? Yeah, I still can't believe it. I just feel so lost. We've been partners for six years, Dee. I thought I knew him. God, Paul, what are you going to do? I can't turn him in, Dee. He's my partner. So, what are you going to do? I'm going to tell him no, of course. Maybe that'll end it. He said he won't go through with it without me. I hope that's true. Me too, Paul. I hope you're doing the right thing. I'm not doing the right thing, Dee. I feel sick about it. Loyalty is a good thing, most of the time. But if misplaced, it can do more harm than good. Paul knows exactly what he's supposed to do, but his loyalty to his partner is jeopardizing his career and his integrity. He has also compounded his error by informing his wife of the bribe offer. Maybe he should think about it again and see if he can see his way through to taking the only option that this predicament offers. Oh, Paul. Hey, I'm sorry, darling. I didn't mean to wake you up. No, I was waiting out for you anyway. How was work? Paul, Paul, is everything okay? No, but it will be. I've got a problem at work, but I'm going to take care of it. Now, you go on back to sleep. I shouldn't be long. I've got to go out to the living room and make a phone call. I'll be right back, I promise. Doing the right thing isn't always the easy thing and doesn't always make you feel better, but it will keep you out of trouble and in the end is always the only thing to do. The import specialist in the next scenario is going to find herself in a similar situation. Let's see if she draws the same conclusion. Jason, how are you? <laughs> Come on in. For my favorite girl. Oh, Jason, you didn't have to. Oh, well, yes, I did. I'm really sorry I couldn't make it Friday night, Leanne. I was uh, working on a proposal for a contract with a big time computer manufacturer, and I was really behind the eight ball. But uh, I'm going to make it up to you this weekend at the lake, provided we're still on, aren't we? 
Just try to get out of it. <laughs> Thank you for the flowers. Sure. And listen, what about what about dinner tonight? My penance for missing your dinner party. You sure you have the time with the contract and everything? Sure, sure. It only needs another three hours of work max. I'll be I'll be done by tonight easy. I'm headed over to finish it up now. So how about if I pick you up at eight? That would be nice. <laughs> you know, Leanne, you are as pretty as that rose. Go on. Get out of here. <laughs> Leanne, I forgot. I wanted to ask a favor of you. What's that? Well, this contract that I'm working on, I'm real close to, to landing it. But, of course, price is a major issue. And the company's concerned about the duty that they're going to have to pay on one of the items that they want shipped. And duty depends upon its classification. What item are you talking about, Jason? Well, CPUs. What's the problem? Well, I don't have to tell you about the motherboards and CPU classification. You mean whether or not the CPUs are attached to the motherboard? <clears throat> well, yeah. And I was also telling my customer that I might be able to get assurances that any shipments of that item would be classified as unattached CPUs. I know that by doing that, it would save them hundreds of thousands of dollars. And then you could land the contract. Well, yeah. And the favor for me starts with the fact that those CPUs aren't unattached, are they? Well, I, I don't know that, Leanne. I'm just, I'm just passing along information that my customer told me. Jason, I don't know about this. Classifying your merchandise so you can get a better rate. I mean, I could get into a lot of trouble. If you get caught, Leanne, there's so much stuff that goes in and out of here. They're not going to see one little mistake, and even, even if, if they do. You can always say that it was just a little mistake. But this, this really means a lot to me, Leanne. I, a lot to us. If I get this contract, well, we could always take that trip to Hawaii that we've been talking about. And then I will shower you with roses. No, it's too risky, Jason. I could lose my job. I could go to prison. It's not worth a trip to Hawaii. You're not going to get caught, Leanne. This means a ton of money to me, to us. I mean, we can go wherever you want for as long as you want. Don't pull that on me, Jason. Don't make this come between us. I'm not going to change my mind. I can't just give you a classification without inspecting the merchandise. And if the CPUs are attached, well, then they're attached, and they'll be applied the proper duty. Look, look Leanne, I, I'm sorry. Okay, I can see that this puts you in a very bad situation. I guess I was just being stupid. I don't know. I, I really don't want to get you in trouble. I hope this doesn't ruin it for us. No. <laughs> so we're still on for this weekend? And tonight. Don't forget about tonight. I'm headed over to finish up this proposal because I am going to win this, this contract. Good. See you. Wanda, this is Leanne Spencer. Can you get me in this afternoon? I've got a date tonight, and my hair's a mess. That'd be great. Thanks. Bye-bye. Wrong number, Leanne. This man is a customs house broker, and one should be on guard of socializing with a member of the importing community in order to prevent a possible conflict of interest. You should have notified your supervisor of your relationship with Jason and reclused yourself from any professional involvement. Aside from that, he just asked you to use your position to cheat the government out of hundreds of thousands of dollars. He asked you to break the law, risk imprisonment, compromise your integrity, and in the same breath, ask you to go to Hawaii with him. Are you sure you want to go anywhere with this guy? Don't you think you have another phone call to make? Let's go back and see if you've got that number handy. This, this means a lot to me, Leanne, to us. If I get this contract, 
we can always take that trip to Hawaii that we've been talking about. Then I will shower you with roses. It's risky, Jason. I could lose my job. I could go to prison. Are you sure it's worth a trip to Hawaii? You're not going to get caught, Leanne. This means a ton of money to me, to us. I mean, I mean we can go wherever you want for as long as you want. Let me think about it, okay? This is a big step for me. That's fair. I know you'll do right by me. I can hear those ocean waves now. I'm going to head back over and finish up this damn proposal. I'll pick you up at eight. Hello, Internal Affairs. This is Import Specialist Leanne Spencer. I have a bribe offer to report, but I've got to tell you something else first. Well, it's about to Leanne come Spencer up. has some explaining to do. By failing to notify her supervisor of her relationship with a customs house broker and reclusing herself from any professional involvement, she has fostered a conflict of interest that could have been harmful to the U.S. government. But by keeping her head when the bribe was offered and having the courage to come forward, she has saved her career and her integrity. And that's what this program has been all about. The scenarios we have seen here today are fiction, but they're all based on U.S. Customs case files. And although they are all different, in a way they are all very similar. They all testify to the importance of recognizing a bribe and playing it smart when it has been offered. They all affirm the necessity of integrity and having the courage to do the right thing. Statistics show that bribery or attempted bribery from the outside or from within will somehow affect every U.S. Customs officer. I think we can therefore all see the importance of being prepared both mentally and morally when that offer is placed in front of you. President Theodore Roosevelt once said, there can be no crime more serious than bribery. Other offenses violate one law, while corruption strikes at the foundation of the law. The givers and takers of bribes stand on an evil preeminence of infamy. The exposure and punishment of public corruption is an honor to the nation, not a disgrace. In taking these words to heart, it is important for all of you, when and if a bribe is offered, to be prepared to play it smart and make the right decision.